MEV is a new emergent phenomenon on the blockchain, a challenge with scaling this open and transparent new financial system for the world. Miners and validators have different powers that they could use to extract additional value from the blockchain in ways that the protocol wasn't necessarily built for. With MEV, close to $700 million have been extracted in Ethereum alone since the summer of 2020 or since DeFi summer. So what exactly is MEV? MEV or maximum extractable value is the amount of additional revenue that a miner in proof of work or a validator in proof of stake can extract from the protocol. And this can be done by including, excluding or censoring and by changing the order of transaction in a block. The term MEV was first coined in 2019 by a team of researchers, shown in this paper Flash Voice 2.0. So why is MEV such a controversial subject? Miners and validators have a lot of power in cryptocurrency systems. They have the choice and freedom to decide what order of transactions are added in each block in Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cosmos, and more. For example, should I as a validator include Joe's transaction or Lisa's transaction? Should I include Joe's transaction before Amanda's transaction? These are all choices and freedom miners and validators have in the system. All of these freedoms put together gives them power to influence outcome. And that power is very valuable. The value that miners or validators can extract by doing things like reordering transaction, inserting transaction, or even censoring other people's transaction, causing them to fail. The sum of all these things and the amount that they can increase their profit is called MEV. There are teams working very hard to democratize access to MEV in efforts to make it more transparent and fair. We can see Flashbots in Ethereum and Skip in Cosmos. For example, with Flashbots, a research and development organization, one of their solutions is MEV Boost, built for Ethereum, where validators maximize their staking rewards by selling block space to an open market of builders, a free open source software built for the community. We at Staking currently run MEV Boost with Flashbots on Ethereum. In the other hand, Skip Protocol is also working to democratize access to MEV opportunities. They are dedicated as a public good for the Cosmos ecosystem. Staking has currently implemented Skip. If you wish to know more about Skip, I'll link this 5 minute video by one of its founders, Magnus. So, what are the different types of MEV? They're both positives and negatives. Let's take a look at the main ones. So let's start with bad MEV. The main one is the sandwiching. A nefarious trader looks for a pending transaction on a network of their choice, like Ethereum. Sandwiching occurs by placing one order right before the trader and one right after it. In essence, the attacker will front run and back run simultaneously, with the original pending transaction sandwiched in between. Another example is just by front running, where miners or validators are able to do so as a way to increase their yield. This occurs when they detect a potentially profitable transaction in the mempool, example, a flash loan or a large transaction, and executes a similar transaction first with a higher fee. This will be then minted first, allowing them to essentially steal the victim's alpha and gains. At the application level, some forms of MEV like Sandwich will result in a negative experience for the user, who, as a result of that, will suffer from 
excess slippage, and quite possibly an even worse execution. Meanwhile, at the network level, front runners and the gas price auctions they engage in result in network congestions, which translates to higher gas fees for all of us trying to just get out regular transactions. On the other hand, for good MEV is arbitrage. In a decentralized exchange, arbitrage is the simplest and most well-known MEV opportunity. It works like this. If two decentralized exchanges offering a token at two very different prices, someone can buy the token at a lower price decentralized exchange or DEX and sell it at a higher price DEX in a single atomic transaction. Another good type of MEV is liquidations. Lending protocol liquidations present another well-known MEV opportunity, which also involves searchers inserting transaction after the user or back running. If you wish to deep dive on MEV, check out this wiki link right here. Many DeFi projects rely on economically rational actors to ensure the usefulness and stability of their protocols. For instance, DEX arbitrage ensures that users get the best, most correct price for their tokens. As we've seen, MEV can increase the staking rewards, which in turn can incentivize more delegation, which in turn will make it harder to attack the network and at the end will make the network even more secure. MEV is not going anywhere anytime soon. Crypto communities should continue to build tools to further democratize its access. Several communities such as Skip and Flashbots continue to further this goal. MEV is not a crypto specific problem or opportunity. It goes into the nature of how the order operations happen. As soon as you have bookkeeping or ordering capabilities, new questions emerge. Who has the right or who should have the power to determine this? And that's a very existential question. It is fair to remain cautiously optimistic, as if you were watching the early days of the internet, full of potential and unknowns. What do you think is going to be the future of MEV? Do you think MEV will be good or bad? How do you think validators should approach MEV extraction? Leave your comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.